three. 13 top. six. 13 six, okay. So in the front of the field, it remains Paul Tracy, who, with the exception of a lap taken over by Emerson Fittipaldi on pit stops, has led all the way as we approach the halfway point at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Back at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, where now Al Unser Jr. closes right down on his teammate, the leader of the race, Paul Tracy. They flash down the pit straight. And Paul Tracy is trying to signal Adrian Fernandez, who started 14th and now runs in 8th, and is just ahead of him on the course, that he's there and get out of his way. <laughs> he's apparently somewhat worried by the presence of little Al just behind him. Look at Tracy. Oh, they're very close together. Tracy gets under. Allenser Jr. gets caught. Fernandez apparently unaware of the position of little Al. That was a brilliant but daring move by Paul Tracy. Now little Al has got to follow suit if he's going to stay in touch. As they approach the end of that long straight, here they come. Well, Adrian, yep. I'm having a lot more notice there. Little Al is coming by because of the fact that Tracy just came by, but I don't think Adrian saw him coming up in his mirrors. I think that was totally unexpected. Here I it don't is think again he... as they come down into the corner. This is at the keyhole. Adrian's in wide right there. He got in too deep. That's probably what he's trying to do. Look at the inside tire come up from the end of the car. Now he's turning down. He turns down almost on Tracy. Here's Little Al. He'd like to get in there, but Fernandez comes right on down to the curb. No way for Little Al to get through. You See, know, it's absolutely amazing to me how a guy like Paul Tracy or Little Al, but Paul Tracy most visibly, can go flying into a corner, still under braking all the way through the corner until he accelerates. Well, he took a gamble on that one because we stopped. Fernandez almost came down on him. In fact, if it hadn't been for Adrian going in the turn a little bit too fast, he would have surely come down on him. Probably. See, and it's the kind of thing that you'd been hard-pressed to blame Adrian Fernandez because for cutting two, three laps, he's seeing Paul Tracy back there, back there, back there. All of a sudden, he goes from four car lengths back to right alongside of him. Damn, he should have let him go. He was being lapped. I agree. It's a courtesy thing. That's what the rules say you're supposed to do. Robbie Gordon tries to make on a move on Mauricio Guzman for fifth again. Look at him as he looks to the outside. Theoretically, you can't even move there. Now, it's a really light place. That's where the cars go over a hill, like a big hump. And it's a hard place to pass. I was surprised that Robbie was trying that one, because believe it or not, the cars will absolutely get airborne. Then they go off camber as you go around to the next turn. And what is that like? It's like off-road racing, gentlemen. You're so busy shaking hands, making this great point. It's exactly like what Robbie does the Baja 1000 and everything. He's an expert at driving a car that's very lightly loaded and is turning in very unusual ways. Now here they're coming up behind Bobby Rahal. Big difference in horsepower between the Honda and the Elmores right there. Let's see how they do with lapping Bobby here. The leader's closing on seventh place, Bobby Rahal, and then they're lined up in front of him, fourth through seventh. Nigel Guzelman, Robbie Gordon, and Bobby Rahal. Now, Tracy tried the same thing there with Rahal that he did with Fernandez, but he couldn't get his nose up underneath it. Right, because Rahal was tucked down tight into the turn, and Rahal knows how to defend himself here. Doesn't look as if he's going to choose to do it. There's Little Al. Very precarious as Little Al looks to the inside as they come around Rahal. It is not going to be easy for them as they come up through the remaining of this group. They're all involved in battles on their own, and I suspect Gordon is going to be very tough to pass. Well, it also makes it easier sometimes. If you can take your guy like Little Al can take Tracy, box him in behind somebody that's slower, it makes it easy for Little Al to pass, and that's obviously what he was trying to do there. Ray Hall running in seventh, of course, it's a bitter pill to have to let people that are lapping you by, but he made the smart decision. You see him there. He really is a master of careful driving and yet driving extremely fast. Bobby Rahal very rarely makes a mistake in an Indy car. Oh, he's a tactician all the way. Look at that line as they head through the first turn at the end of the pit straight now. now you notice Little Al really putting the pressure on. Remember, he's trying to box Tracy in. Any place that Tracy goes, he wants to box Here him comes in. Gordon again, right alongside Guzman, forces Guzman offline into the outside, and Tracy and Little Al come through as well. Now Little Al sets up to make a move on Paul Tracy. He's tucked in right behind. He goes to the inside this time. Now Little Al sweeps to the outside on the corner, and Paul Tracy takes the inside. So, yeah, the next turn is to the left, so if you can get uh, to the left of your adversary, you can get him on the next bend. Now this is sometimes, remember, what makes passing easy. Gordon makes the move on Nigel Mansell now. They come off the corner side by side. And Robbie Gordon has the line and the position there. But here is Paul Tracy as he screams down behind Nigel Mansell, who now runs in fourth place. It's awesome. Just think, he's absolutely lapping Mansell. This is something we hardly...
and everything. And Mansell pulled well aside. A terrific moment for Gordon because having gone from dueling with Mansell, he's now a second and a half ahead of him. And Nigel is smart. He doesn't want any part of that battle. All it can do is get him in trouble. That is a terrific lap for young Robbie Gordon. And Bobby Rahal slowing down. Rahal, who was running in eighth place. You can just about bet he's had another main bearing problem in the engine. Remember what I said, the engine is part of the frame and it's twisting in this car. Obviously, he's gonna have some engine problems. He's had already a problem yesterday, very similar. Really a shame for the Honda people. I know they're working hard. It's that same terrible thing for Rahal. There's nobody at this track that's probably any better than Ray Hall as a driver. A part line out on the track, it could be off Parker Johnstone's car. It could be off one of the Marlboro cars as well. There it is. For that matter, it could be off Mark Smith's car. We'll keep an eye on all of them. Bobby Ray Hall already out of the car. Yeah, so what we heard, it sounded terminal. Great stop. That was awesome. Hogan. Look at him. And look at him thank Jim Prescott for a great stop. Let's get an update. Here's Gary Gerald. Boy, the disappointment that this team has endured. They know it was going to be tough on this learning curve for the Honda Pro out of the race. Again, it's the engine. Carl Hogan, bitter disappointment. You saw Bobby thanking his crew for a great race car. But, man, the frustration, it just oozes out of this pit, Paul. Well, that piece of debris that we saw on the course, the indication is that's off of Mark Smith's car. Apparently, he got in contact with Parker Johnstone, and both of those cars are in the pit right now. Parker's changing their front wings on his car, and Mark Smith, it looks like they're going over that car for just a routine stop. It's really, it's really difficult to determine. I suspect that part is probably off of Parker Johnstone's. Back now on Michael Andretti, that's Adrian Fernandez just ahead of him. Fernandez runs in seventh place. He's really been doing good at this race so far. He's been fast in all the practice sessions, pretty good in qualifications, and he's kind of new at this racetrack. Fernandez, of course, is from Mexico. He is new at this racetrack. He's having his first shot at it. The last couple of races, Adrian Fernandez has started to really race the biggest names in IndyCar racing. He's a very calm man. He knew it was going to take a while to get everything functioning. And I said, what is the difference now between how you race and how you race back in Australia at the beginning of the year, which seems now so long ago? He said, I'm just not any faster at the wheel. I'm just so much more aware of strategy, tactics, what's going on in my car, how to use the pit work. Adrian Fernandez again uses that high outside line as Guzelman gets sound on the inside. Let's go to the pits once again. Gary Gerald is with Bobby Rahal. Bobby, we were talking about the learning curve. You knew it was going to be tough. The frustration factor, however, has so many engines. How, how are you and this team dealing with it? Well, probably not very well right now. You know, we're getting, it's getting worse. It's not getting any better. You know, you can't get an engine to last 140 miles. It's pretty bad shape, and it's uh, just depressing, you know. It's, what do you do? The car, the car is handling beautifully. I, you know, I just slower the molasses on the straightaways and off the corners, and yet you can stay right with them. But um, you know, if you, I, I think I, I think we got to get it where we can last 200 miles. So far, we're not even close to that. What about next year? Will you still have Honda as the power plant? Will you stay with this program? Oh, I think we'll have to stay tuned for that one. All right, Bob. Thank you. Go. Well, that's bad news that we're hearing from Ray Hall. Of course, you know, this is his hometown track also. Disappointment here has to be more so than a rookie anywhere other than maybe Indianapolis. Yeah, but that answer may be very indicative of yeah. what may happen next year. Let's go back to the lead of the race. Al Unser Jr. continues his pursuit of Paul Tracy. And little Al is just staying glued to the back end of that car. And they maintain it. Oh, tail Fabi off the race course and into the gravel pit. They've That's been maintaining about the same interval back from Robbie Gordon as they have for the past couple laps. Gordon just running right in front of the leaders. Well, we knew that Robbie Gordon was going to do an adjustment, as Sam said earlier, during his first pit stop, and he's obviously has done that adjustment, and he's going fast. He's staying ahead. That's Robbie Gordon just to the left of the blue and right car. Tracy right behind him there. Little Al right behind him. Little Al, of course, is going to keep the pressure on Tracy. All he can do. That interval of nearly half a second between first and second is pretty much what they have been for the last several laps. They're averaging 113.5 miles an hour, which is a race record to this point. 
And we have run the race now down to 32 laps to the finish without any full course yellows at all. You know what's unusual about this, uh, Paul and Bobby? How rarely we see Paul Tracy under pressure from behind. Usually when he's ahead, he's just pulling ahead. It's very rare to see somebody right behind him lap after lap. So it's Paul Tracy who is the dominant power in this race. And he continues to be pursued by Al Unser Jr. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Back at the Miller Genuine Draft 200, the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, on a beautiful, cool afternoon, you ride with Robbie Gordon, who's had more than a thrilling afternoon just a few moments ago. Look at him as they're coming through here. Well, he almost spun that thing out. You see the rear end? Must have jumped out three feet on him right there. Almost lost it. That kid drives all the time. Here it is in slow motion. The safety team trying to get Watch tail on the right Bobby there. off. Look at Robbie. Watch him. Break too much of the rear. The rear end jumped way out. Left a big black rubber mark. And still only lost one position to Paul Tracy, who's on his right. The red and white car there. The Ray Hall Hogan team has more trouble. Mike Croft has pulled to a stop just inside the carousel. Apparently his day has done no indication what went wrong with this car to get it off the race course. Back on board with Robbie Gordon now. And we'll go down through the running order after 53 laps. Paul Tracy continues to be the power in this race. And Robbie Gordon officially should have gone down one lap right there, Paul, which is something he really didn't want to do. Let's go to the pits and jack a root. Well, even if you're being lapped, gentlemen, you don't like to be lapped under the caution, and that seems to be your complaint, Derek Walker, about the leader. Well, from the, uh, the television coverage there, we can see he passed under that yellow flag. That's, that's he being Paul Tracy, correct? Yeah, absolutely. That's a stop and go. I don't know why they haven't brought him in. We don't know either, but they have talked to the card officials, and it's got to be their call, as you know. Well, I guess that's something, Jack, we might have overlooked from up here because I didn't see that either. Well, it's there. The question is whether or not it was a deliberate pass or as a result of this action. Now watch it here. Robbie loses. It comes to the outside. Tracy maintains his momentum, but Robbie has slowed. Now, now what does he do? It's if not a position. A, it's a lap. If I was an official, I would have to call that is not Paul Tracy's fault. I mean... Gordon, for all practical purposes, within a quarter of a second, could either have lost it or crashed his car, and he was certainly headed in that direction. The fact he saved it was just a tribute to his driving abilities. Plus, you could see that Paul Tracy locked his wheels up trying to slow down. Nigel Mansell in fourth with Adrian 